Prove trigonometric identity. The question is, prove 1 plus sin x plus cosine x divided by 1 minus sin x plus cosine x is equal to 1 plus sin x divided by cos x. Now with the help of this identity, I'm going to show you another very important strategy. This strategy is, it works really for difficult questions like this, okay? Now the strategy is, you should always see what you want to prove. On the right side, we need 1 plus sine x over cosine x. Now, since the left side is more complicated than right, we should start from the left side. And what we will do here is, we will kind of rationalize, we will kind of multiply this fraction with 1 plus sine x. Okay. So the strategy here is, let's start with left side, which is 1 plus sine x plus cosine x divided by 1 minus sine x plus cosine x, right? So the strategy which I am telling you is that we need 1 plus sine x, right? So let's multiply this by 1 plus sine x divided by 1 plus sine x. Same thing, right? It's as good as multiplying by 1. You can always do it. So we say, well, now, our left side is really equal to this, which is 1 plus sine x plus cosine x divided by 1 minus sine x plus cosine x times 1 plus sine x over 1 plus sine x. Correct? So that is the strategy. Now, how to solve it? Remember, we want 1 plus sine x. So don't expand numerator. Just keep it as such. 1 plus sine x plus cosine x times 1 plus sine x. We need 1 plus sine x. Therefore, we are not expanding the numerator, but expand denominator. Multiply 1 minus sine x plus cosine x by 1 plus sine x. So, let's do it with 1 first. So, when you do it 1, you get all these terms, which is 1 minus sine x plus cos x. Now multiply them by sin x. You get sin x minus sin square x plus sin x cosine x. That's what you get. Next step. Now, as you can see from here, we do have a term which is kind of 1 minus sin square x, which could be written as cosine square x, right? So we have this term 1 minus sine square x, which can be combined. That is one thing you notice. Second thing, we have minus sine x and plus sine x. They can be cancelled out, zero, right? So the second thing which you notice is that you have minus sine x and you have sine x. So their sum is zero. So we'll, in the next step, do these two things together, right? So what we get here is on the numerator, we get 1 plus sine x plus cosine x times 1 plus sine x. And in the denominator, 1 minus sine square x can be written as cosine square x, right? Minus sine x plus sine x is 0. We're left with plus cos x and the term sine x cos x. Correct? Right? Now here, if you notice, in the denominator, cos is common. So we can take that common. And let me ex write this as 1 plus sine x plus cosine x times 1 plus sine x in the numerator, right? And in the denominator, I will take cosine x as common. So you are left with cos x here plus 1 plus sine x. Now, do you see a common factor there? Cos x, 1, sin x. So these factors cancel out. And what do you get? You get 1 plus sin x divided by cosine x, which is right side. Do you see that? So you get 1 plus sin x over cosine x, which is right side. And therefore, the identity has been proven, right? 
So let's go through it once again and let's try to understand the strategy. Strategy is very important, right? Otherwise, this problem could have been very difficult. Now, since we need 1 plus sine x on the right side, it's a good idea to multiply the left side and divide it by 1 plus sine x. Now, as you know, we need 1 plus sine x. So, retain 1 plus sine x in the numerator. Don't expand numerator, but expand denominator and look for the common factor. Once you get it, cancel it out and then you'll find the result. That is how it is to be done, okay? I hope you appreciate it. Thank you.